Hello, this is Warlord. What we're going to do today is take a look at some basic lighting and how to improve on default lighting. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, we have a scene that has basic default lighting. Uh, it's just a simple scene. There's not much to it. And it's flat because the default lighting just doesn't do anything for it. So what I do when I first start is I shut off all the lighting. That way I know that nothing's interfering with it so we'll come in and turn off the lighting and you'll notice we can still see some things well that's because of our ambient light so I'm going to turn that to black and now all we can see is our sky and we don't probably don't want it quite that bright and I know that this sky has self illumination so we'll just come in and cut it back at least halfway and now here it is with no lighting what you're seeing right here, if you can see it, is the shine off the tankard that is on the table. So we had a candle over here, there's a lantern on the table, and then on the wall we have a torch. So let's start lighting the candle first. I want this to be a point light, so I'm going to turn on a point light. Now if you don't know where your point light is, there's a simple way to find it. Like in this case, I want to actually link it to that candle. So I'm going to pick parent, and it looks like I hit the wall. Let's try it again. There, that put me on the candle wax. And then I'm going to click the link to position. And that will move that light uh, over to the candle. And now we can go ahead and change our color. And in this case, I'm going to use kind of a golden color. Use decay. And let's cut it back quite a bit. Now this is where you can go in and just play with this for, for hours on end. Everybody has a different way to light. You can see how we can move things around and change it. What I'm trying to do is light the area around this candle. And I don't want it to be a large area. So I'm going to say somewhere in there. Now, this has a flame built on it, and in this case, we can actually pick that flame out with our color picker. And then we can add a glow to it. And you can actually animate that glow flickering on and off by just going down the timeline but we're not going to quite get into that and now we have one section of the room lit or at least lit for just the beginning for preliminary now I'm going to light the lantern on the table use another point light for that here's our lantern so let's go ahead and pick parent use position And let's change our light color. Now we'll hit our decay. Lower it back. And position it. And now we have two light sources there. Now we're ready to go ahead and use another point light to light our torch. And here we can see our point light is right there. So we don't really have to use the link to feature. I'm going to hit K, set my range. Now this is where you would really come back and spend a lot of time is setting the range. Even though there's only two settings on this, you can also remember use your multiplier along with your range and that will that will show how much of the room you're going to light up and where you place it is that's just going to be your personal preference
I'm gonna say right, right about there. All right. That leaves us three light sources right there. Now we have our basic lighting, but we're missing something, and that's shadows. And that's because uh, point lights don't have shadows. So let's go ahead and establish at least one regular light. Let's turn it on, and let's make it into a spotlight. And there's our spotlight. Now we want this to be an outside light source. And now you can see how it's projecting through these windows. It's just giving us our light here, plus the shadows. So this is where you just set it as to however, whatever your outside light source would be that you're mimicking. And of course we have decay here as well, but you may or may not want to use it depending on how bright and where you place your beam. Let's see. Put it right there. Make it. I'm going to make it uh, fairly bright so you can see the shadows a little better in this tutorial. Now remember also we have angle and fall off when we go to using the spotlights. And this again is something that you could spend hours on setting up. Now what I did was use decay to soften it and then just increase my multiplier so it wouldn't be quite so harsh. Now to soften this up a little bit, we'll also use an orange for it. And that just kind of ties in to flame colors. This is something else that you pick whatever colors you want to use and now that we've got this done let's just do a quick little animation on him we'll use the motion puppet and what I've done is I'm going to use natural uh, male and I've masked out everything except for one hand the torso and the head and we'll just go ahead and record this out and this will give us the motion for our character. Now we're still not completely through here. We haven't gone in and done our atmosphere. And that's what we'll do next. Now this is good enough just for us to take a look at this. Okay. Now let's see what we can do with our atmosphere. Stage, atmosphere. Turn on ambient occlusion. Probably leave it at its default settings, but I always advise you to go in and just move move the sliders around and see what happens. Turn on HDR, default settings. Now tone maps where you'll see your main change come in. Let's soften it with the Gaussian scale. Now you, this is where you can add or take from the exposure. And this is just a, another personal preference. And then we can use our image based lighting, which as you will notice just helps fill in a little more detail. I generally leave it on 30%. You can change the softness if you would like. Sometimes that makes a change, sometimes you really can't tell. But what image based lighting does is kind of make the details show up more. So if you want it darker, leave it off or lower it. Or raise it up just to add a little bit of ambiance to it. And increase your exposure just a little. Now this is something you can go back and light differently every time you try it. Uh, you can go in and tweak this. You can change colors. This is just the basics to show you where it's at. I would not even really consider this to be a well-lit scene because that would take a lot more time than we have to go into right here. But this shows you how to set up point lights and how to also set up shadows. I hope this helps.